Hi, welcome or welcome back. My name is Felicia. I'm a knitter living in Washington, D.C. And this is my little corner of the internet where I like to share all about my knitting and the fiber goodness that goes along with it. So I just wanna thank everyone for taking time out of your busy day to spend it with me, to see what I'm knitting and to listen to me, I'm sure, ramble on about a whole lot of nothing. I truly, genuinely appreciate everyone who watches my videos, comments on my videos, likes my videos, shares them, who subscribes. All of it means the world to me because it just reminds me that I am not alone, even though I am technically alone in my apartment filming this, but that there's someone on the other end of, of this endeavor and that um, there are people who are interested in, in what I have to say and what I have to share. So I appreciate it so much. It has been since August <laughs> since I filmed and uploaded a podcast. The last episode that I did, I had a special guest slash friend of the podcast my mom hi mommy um on the podcast with me and she, it was so much fun to film with her i wish that i had the foresight to set up my like set up a second camera so that i could have filmed behind the scenes of us filming because i think that was honestly the like the funniest part of the whole thing but I had so much fun filming with my mom and I'm sure that she has watched that episode like not less than a hundred times and she reads every single comment. She reads all the comments on my videos anyway so be nice because my mom is watching but she especially like read all of the comments from the video from that particular video and don't worry I, I've heard you all. People have DM'd me, texted me. My mom will be back on the podcast. Uh, I don't know when, but I guarantee you that she will be back on the podcast. She really loved like doing that. And for me as a person who is actually incredibly private, putting my mom on the big worldwide web internet was a little scary because I'm very protective of my mom. I'm very protective of my family. And so I'm a little weary, a little leery, excuse me, to to share them in, in a public forum such as YouTube and my Instagram and things like that. So I really do appreciate that everyone was so kind and just had the sweetest things to say about my mom and about us together. And yeah, so she will definitely be on the podcast again. I don't know when. She's not going to be a regular because <laughs> y'all aren't going to push me out of my own podcast and make it be I have to podcast with my mama even though I love her um also she doesn't live in DC she <laughs> lives in Alabama so the logistics of getting her on a podcast episode with all of my knitting and all of the other things it's just we'll figure it out but don't worry we'll see her again either on my YouTube um or on my Instagram she is around and so again I just want to thank everyone for being so kind and so sweet about having my mommy on the podcast um so it has been what three months <laughs> since my last podcast episode and there's just been a lot going on i started a new job in october um so i've been at my new job for a little over six weeks and there was just a lot going on with leaving my old job and starting my new job and so that transition just took a lot of energy and mental emotional and physical <laughs> labor uh to to get done so I I knit actually quite a lot because I tend to knit when I am dealing with stress or emotional things. Um, I don't know that I've talked about this specifically on this podcast, but I came into knitting the way that I knit now after a, a fairly traumatic experience. And so a lot of times I don't I don't associate knitting with stress in the sense of like I only do it when I am stressed but I do notice that there are times where when I'm working to process emotions or deal with something where I will lean more into my knitting and my knitting practice than just my regular like oh let me knit during lunch or let me knit on the metro where it where it's sort of in one aspect it's sort of meditative and um, a routine. It's just something that I do every day or fairly regularly. But for the last few months, it has been something that I have done as sort of a, as really a stress relief 
and as something that I needed in that moment. Like it became much more, much more than just a habit that I have, but it really became like a fundamental part of my mental health and wellness routine. And so I do have a lot to show as a result of that. Some things were successful projects, as you will see. Some things were not successful projects. Nothing is finished. And well, I take that back. I have one finished object. Uh, but of all, of all the things that I've been knitting on, nothing is completed. And I'm okay with that. And I, you know, I think that especially for people who share their their knitting on social media or on the internet there is this pressure to and i've talked about this before on the podcast but there's a lot of pressure to constantly be finishing things complex things to be on the cutting edge of patterns and yarns and always you know knitting with the newest latest most exciting you know fiber or knitting the newest latest greatest pro uh, pattern and that pressure can be a little stifling and suffocating for your creativity and for just your your practice and i don't knit for social media i don't knit for youtube i knit and i share those things on social media and on youtube and so there are going to be times where i have a ton of finished objects a ton of finished objects and then there are going to be times like now where i've been knitting a lot and I don't feel like I have any finished objects to show, but I do have a lot of lessons learned from the things that I've knit. And I had fun. And for me, that is that is sort of the most important part, right? Is that the practice of knitting, the practice of having, you know, these tools in my hand with this wonderful yarn and this wonderful fiber is both to produce something, but also to give me to give me something right and that something might not always be a physical object that something might be stress relief or the ability to sort of occupy my body in a way so that my mind can process information and and come up with ideas and plan things and figure things out and process and all of those other things so i said that to say that i'm going to be showing a lot nothing is finished and i'm okay with that uh I know some people are really into seeing a ton of finished objects and a stack of knits. I have a stack of knits, none of them are finished. And that's all I got. <laughs> like, I don't know what else to tell you. So I'm going to dive into it. And I also have picked up just along the way. I'm going to share some things that I picked up. I don't know if they're still available. I'm sorry if they're not. But I haven't shared them anywhere. And I, But I do want to highlight um, these makers. So I'm going to share all of that stuff <laughs> with you. So the one and only finished object that I have are my socks. And there's an end. I think all my ends are woven in, so I don't. Oh, it's just a loose piece of yarn. Uh, so these socks. I don't have a sock locker. I had one. I don't know where it is. Uh, but these socks. I recently, not recently. I probably finished these in. Gosh, September maybe. Um, the yarn is a yarn from treehouse knits from the coco collection i don't think it's available anymore but it was a sock um set that came with the variegated yarn and then the uh solid that i used for is it focusing there we go um that i used for the heel and then i did this um horizontal braid detail that hopefully you'll be able to see uh, there we go I did this horizontal braid detail or lateral braid I don't know but I will link to my Ravelry page where I link to the YouTube video that I use to actually do the braid and then otherwise it's just a plain vanilla sock with a with an eye of partridge heel heel flap and gusset sort of my go-to sock I don't have any socks on the needles right now but I don't know I'm kind of tempted to cast on like a pair of Christmas socks I have some Christmas sock yarn that I purchased gosh probably in 2020 maybe uh, from Hue Loco I think I have two sock sets so i think i might cast them on 
because I don't foresee myself using the yarn for anything else, so I might as well cast on some socks. But anyway, here are my socks. They are finished. That is the only thing I have finished in a while. Okay, we're gonna go on a journey. Don't worry, I have something really exciting to show at the end. So it's gonna be worth the journey, but we're gonna go on a journey. So on the last podcast, I talked about wanting to knit with this confetti yarn from I don't know why my camera is not focusing um but this is the Cory confetti ochre color I'm gonna just go ahead and apologize in advance I mucked around with some settings on my camera and now it's not really focusing I don't think so it I'm, I'm not gonna change them halfway through so I'm sorry I apologize in advance uh but hopefully the next podcast the focus will be better anyway Cory confetti ochre and I was debating between that and this color from, Cor from Lobby Anime for a uh, basket weave, the Vleck Basket Weave Pullover by Nancy Marchand. And if you follow me over on Instagram, you will see that I picked the ochre color for the sweater. And I knit it. <laughs> I knit a good lot of it, okay? So here it is. It is gorgeous. The color is stunning. This is pretty accurate. The color is stunning. Um, so I'm gonna talk about what I did and I'm gonna talk about why I have stopped working on this project and why I'm gonna fry it. Okay, so I will also link to my Ravelry page so that you can get any more details if you do decide that you want to knit this pattern. So if you look on the Ravelry page for the pattern, it's knit, so it, it has um, intarsia on it as well. I omitted the the intarsia and just knit it solid. I I didn't, I liked the intarsia, but I, I just didn't want to do it. It wasn't the vibe that I was going for. So I started knitting it. I love the um, Cory from Lobby Anime. I knit a cardigan and the regular Cory worsted. The Cory confetti, this was my first time knitting with it and I definitely am gonna knit with it again. What I will say is that it's a lot more thick and thin than the regular Cory worsted. Uh, and that's probably that probably has a lot to do with like the scraps that are like, in it and so some of them are a little loose like this one and they're just able to like come right out and that's fine um i just sort of pull those ones out anyway back to the sweater so i decided to knit a so thoughts are everywhere this is what happens when i don't take notes okay so on the project on the like sample it's very very boxy very oversized very long that's not my vibe that's not my zhuzh so i wasn't I was never gonna knit it that way. So I did a little math, I did a little knitting math, and I decided to knit the, it's also knit in panels and knit flat, which in hindsight, because I was not doing the intarsia, I could have just knit it in the round. Did not do that, it doesn't matter at this point because I'm not gonna finish it, but if you decide that you wanna knit this project and you want to omit the, uh, the intarsia I would just knit it flat I mean knit it in the round so I would knit the ribbing flat and then knit in the round and then you can add in a purl column in between the two panels and then use that to create the seam so there you go anyway I knit a size 2 for the back and a size 3 for the front and that was just based on my gauge and the relative amount of ease that I wanted I was going for about four to six inches of ease and I think in the pattern to me it looks closer to like 10 10 ish inches of ease and I just don't like that I think I've talked about this before I carry a lot of my like circumference for sweater knitting across my bust uh, but there's a, a large difference between my upper bust and my full bust and my lower bust and so sometimes with with patterns I do like sometimes I like a lot of ease sometimes a lot of ease can just look frumpy on me and this was one of those sweaters where I was concerned about it just looking frumpy and I didn't want that so that's why I sort of mix and matched to get the size that I wanted and the relative fit that I wanted uh, I knit until I thought I was gonna be close to the 
into the armhole and and neck shaping and then I wet blocked it pinned it flat and then I decided to go ahead and knit the, so I knit the back first and I blocked it then I knit the front blocked it and then I seamed them together into this I guess cowl that's <laughs> what it is now anyway I then was ready to do the armhole shaping and this pattern is completely charted so there's a chart for every single size which is great however I do not believe that I am an accomplished enough chart reader to understand what the chart was trying to get me to do for the shaping so I tried the shaping a couple of times and it was too complicated for me to figure out so I abandoned I just I put it on waste yarn I said I'm gonna wait and see I, I don't know I can't I can't and then as time went on I sort of was just like you know what I knitting is my hobby <laughs> it is my fun it is my stress relief I don't there are not I did not have the mental capacity at the time to figure out this pattern people have finished the pattern so I don't believe that it is impossible to do what I am saying is that I could not do it at this time so I decided that I was gonna frog the project but I learned something what I learned is that Cory confetti in particular this shade the ochre shade is so perfect for texture so I am going to, I don't know that I want a cable with this, but I'm going to look for another pattern that is maybe a little bit easier for me to understand. And I'm going to do some sort of knit and purl texture. I also really like how it looks in ribbing. So I may look for like a fully ribbed sweater or something to that effect. I have moved on. But I will revisit the Cory. I'm going to, now I can frog it. Now that I've shown you, I'm going to frog it. I still have, I have a ton of this yarn. I'm going to find something to make with it. I, like I said, I love knitting with the Cory. It's probably one of my favorite. They say it's worsted, but to me it's a, it's, it's like a heavy sport, light worsted. But I really enjoy knitting with this yarn. I enjoy the way that it feels, the way that it glides on my needles. Like I love this yarn. It could be Desert Island yarn for me for this particular weight. And so I'm going to knit with it again. But I just had to put it aside because it was it wasn't stressing me out. But I just was I just was not enjoying the process of knitting this pattern anymore. So I think the pattern is great. I think it could even be that I still decide to knit the pattern. Maybe just do it differently, like maybe knit it top down and maybe start flat and then build in some neck shaping and shoulder shaping like maybe maybe that's what I'll do I don't know but I what I do know is that I don't have the ability to do that right now so this is gonna get frogged uh, it's going away and I will revisit that yarn when I get ready to revisit the yarn so I left from that project feeling not defeated but actually feeling really empowered right because I was like I knit this thing I didn't love it it's fine I'm gonna knit something else that I know that I love with yarn that I know with a high amount of certainty that I'm gonna enjoy. So I'm actually, hold on, looking at the yarn. Okay, so I also showed this off on my last podcast. This is the Lion Brand Re-Up Yarn. It is a cotton blend. It is 70% cotton, 30% polyester. And this huge cone I bought at Joanne for maybe $10. I, I purchased three of these cones. I am not going to need this cone. I don't, I don't believe that I'm going to need this cone, especially after I show you what I, what I'm about to do. But, um, but they have really, really great colors. And I think when I go home, I might pick up, there's this really pretty aubergine color that I'm, that I'm really feeling. I might also pick up some cream yarn, uh, like this, just two cones if they have it on sale. Anyway, loved working with this yarn. So I wanted to knit the Autumn League Pullover by Alexi at Two of Wands. And when I purchased this yarn, that was the pattern that I had in mind. I have knit three, two, 
well, I guess at this point I have knit three, but I've successfully knit two. One, the first one that I knit was the first sweater that I ever made. And I made it with like a wool blend that I picked up from like a big box store. And then the second one, I knitted in the Lion Brand cotton jeans, which is the yarn that is, that is called for in the pattern. I knit it, I purchased a kit from Lion Brand. And so I knit it in that yarn. And so I knew that I loved the way that the cotton version of it feels. It feels really heavy and it gives you that sweatshirt vibe. It almost feels like a weighted blanket a little bit. And so I knew that I wanted to knit that yarn into that pattern. So I knit a gauge swatch and I cast on. And I got a lot going on. Okay, hold, hold please. There's a lot going on. How did you end up all the way over here? Oop. Sorry, it's a lot going on. Okay, so I knit up a gauge swatch. This is my gauge swatch. And it's so pretty. It has the perfect amount of drapes. Sometimes cotton can be stiff. This is not stiff at all. I was like, oh, this is gonna be perfect. And I cast on and I knit the sweater in like <laughs> record time. So this is a free, it's a free pattern but you can pay for a PDF. I, like I said, I purchased a kit, so I have a PDF, but I will link to the blog where you can knit this for free. So the first time that I knit it, I just followed the free pattern, and then I ended up buying a kit and it came with the paid pattern. Uh, so now I have the, the paid pattern, but it is a free, it is technically a free pattern. And when I first, the first two that I knit was, they, the, the construction was that you cast on flat, you knit sort of, you sort of do short row shaping or what, what amounts gives you the, the effect of short row shaping. Then you connect it in the round and you continue. It's a top down raglan sweater. So you're doing raglan increases. You continue to do the raglan increases and then you separate for sleeves. Then you knit like an inch and then you knit the front flat and you knit the back flat. Then you come back and you pick up the sleeves and you knit the sleeves in the round and then you seam it up. So the first time that I knit this pattern, I followed it. I followed the pattern to the T. I did not understand sweater construction enough to feel like I could. Sorry, I have more hair on my face. I did not feel like I could just freehand the pattern and go off script. The second time that I knit it, I followed the pattern all the way to where you were supposed to split and knit the front flat and knit the back flat. And it just added an extra stitch, uh, like a purl stitch, <laughs> and knit in the round with the two purl stitches. And then when I got to the bottom, there's a split hem and I knit the front hem and I knit the back hem and then I seamed it up. Love that. Since then, Alexi has re-released the pattern with this in the round construction so that you are getting essentially the best of both worlds. She talks a lot about the structural integrity of knitting patterns with seams and how that prevents stretching and things like that. And I think for a cotton sweater, it makes sense. So I just wanted to give that tidbit that they're, yeah. Anyway, I knit the sweater. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of ends. Okay. <laughs> I This is not showing up the greatest on camera, but here we go. I finished the sweater. It is navy blue. It is kind of blowing out and looking lifeless. This sweater is huge. And I didn't necessarily mind that until I got to the ribbing. And I just could not make the ribbing look good. And I tried and I tried and I just could not get it to look good. And oh, now I see what's happening. <laughs> it's, yeah, the, it just didn't look good. So what I have decided to do is I am going to frog this and I am going to go down probably two needle sizes. I knit it on the recommended needle size. So I think I'm going to go down two needle sizes just so I end up with a little bit of a denser fabric because the density of the fabric on my swatch is not quite the density of the fabric once it's knitted. And a lot of that has to do with loosening up. Yes, I know I knit this flat, that changes things. Um, but I think just like loosening it up, I think that my tension loosened up as I was knitting in the round and 
yeah and I also just did I just I don't know I don't love the ribbing I just I don't love it so I'm going to frog it and start over I think what I'm gonna end up doing <laughs> I don't even know what's going on um I think what I'm gonna end up doing is actually starting it maybe from this cone I kind of want to leave one cone kind of untouched I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do as far as the cones are concerned but I am going to rip this back frog it and start over this is a pattern that I could see my that I love knitting so much that it's truly for me just about the fact that I don't enjoy the way that it fits and the way that it turned out I did like the sort of more baggy more oversized fit The more baggy more oversized fit of this one so i think when i go down the two needle sizes that i will probably go i think i knit the large so i may go up one size and knit the extra large just so that i still end up with something that is a little baggy um a little oversized but can hopefully get a neater ribbing and just make everything look a little bit tidier than how it looks uh, in terms of knitting with the yarn, it is a cotton yarn, so it does feel like knitting with cotton. It is soft. It's not like knitting with, um, what is that one that like Lily, that cotton yarn. It's not like that. It's still soft. I think the polyester sort of lends itself to that. And it does split a little bit because it's plied. So you do sort of have to check your work and make sure that you're not splitting the plies when you knit with it. But otherwise, in terms of the cotton some cotton yarns it's definitely much nicer and easier on the hands than the lion brand cotton jeans was that was really rough on my hands this was not as rough on my hands i could knit probably two hours before i started to experience hand fatigue with with this particular yarn so not marathon knitting friendly but it was not uncomfortable to knit with so i'm really excited now that i have shown this on the podcast i can frog it and hopefully cast this back on sorry I'm trying to keep things from falling off the arm of my chair um hopefully cast it back on um this year but it, I don't know there's no rush for me I will cast things on as I sort of get to them and as I have the desire to knit them and there are other things that I sort of desire more than this pattern right now but I do want this this sweater for spring so I think once I get through this sort of mohair <laughs> and fluffy yarn stage that I'm in right now that I will come back and revisit this pattern because just knitting on a cotton sweater is so it's light and it's airy and oh not airy but it's light and it's not as hot as knitting on wool so right now I just have a higher desire and higher threshold for knitting wool and when my cotton desire returns then I will pick this yarn and this pattern back up and re-knit it hopefully at a much better gauge end up with a much nicer finished product and with something that I will truly end up loving and wanting to wear a ton. So those are my two projects that are uh, lessons learned <laughs> and now I have two projects that I think are really successful and I'm so excited to share them with you. So after my two not so successful attempts at, at getting something finished this fall, I decided that I was ready to cast on something else. And I went into my stash because I really wanted to pull from stash. I didn't want to have to buy any yarn. I had already purchased some yarn for my birthday and spent not an insignificant amount of money on that. So I didn't want to I didn't want to buy anything. I wanted to knit from stash. So I went into my stash and I found this in my mohair sort of collection. And again, I'm sorry for the focus issues. We'll get it figured out. This is from the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. This is their O Dang base, which is a Surrey Al Surrey Alpaca silk blend. And I purchased this uh, a couple of years ago from my local yarn shop, um, Loop, Looped Fiber Works in, uh, in DuPont in Washington, D.C. And 
it's looped yarn works. I don't, y'all, today, between the fuzz in the air and my words, work with me. From looped yarn works. And I had purchased this on sale. I picked up, I think, like four skeins of this, maybe five. I think four. Yeah, I picked up four. And so I was like, okay, I want to pair this with something. I don't know what. Let's figure it out. So I went into my just like fingering weight yarns and I have a large sweaters quantity of the of the Mondine by Rosa Pomar. This is the Lobby Anime collaboration. And this is the color winter, which I'm pretty sure is just like undyed. Anyway, I purchased this to do a brioche sweater. So I was like, oh, I should pair these two together to do a brioche sweater. So I did what I love to do and I did a swatch and I'm going to show you my swatch because I ended up not liking it. Okay, so the top half of this swatch is the Mondine with the Oday. And it's hard to sort of see, but it gave a marled effect because the, I don't know why. I don't, I'm talking like I know yarn science. It gave a, a marled effect and I was not into it. So I went back into my stash and I found this yarn, which I have shown before here on the podcast. This is from the Kinetic Knitter. It is her Merino sock, which is 100% superwash Merino. It's a four ply fingering. And this is in the colorway Storm. And she dyed this up for me. She gifted me this yarn. She dyed this up for me for appearing on her, on the podcast with her and Kinsey, their Knit Two Together podcast. I will link to the podcast and to the episode that I was on. But um, Kara so generously dyed up and gifted me a sweater's quantity of this yarn, and which I thought was so sweet. And this is like my color purple this like icy purple i love it and so i swatched that which is you see right here or maybe you don't <laughs> but i did this darker purple swatch and i was obsessed so i ended up going into my my pattern library and i had purchased the brioche bubble crew from deegan which is like a drop shoulder. You can't see nothing. I'm sorry, y'all. This picture's not showing y'all nothing. It's like a drop shoulder-ish uh, brioche crew neck with made with fingering and mohair. So I'm knitting it with fingering and Surrey, which Surrey is a little bit thicker than mohair. It's fine. And I'm also not certain that I have enough of either one of the yarns in this project. So I'm also probably playing a little bit of yarn chicken because as you may or may not know, brioche uses up more yarn than stockinette. And so I think if I was just knitting a stockinette sweater, I would be fine. But because I'm knitting brioche, it's just using up a ton more yarn. So we're gonna see. Anyway, here it is. So this is the body of the sweater and you all can't probably see it but from this little from right here I have five more inches until ribbing so we'll see I'm in my second yarn second yarn second ball of the storm and I'm also in my second ball of the that's not it y'all it's a mess over here I'm also in my second ball of the alpaca so there is a likelihood that i'm not gonna play yarn chicken and i would love to not have to purchase more yarn for this because this pattern this sweater has been relatively inexpensive the, the fingering weight i got for free the surrey i got for like 30 per, 30 or 40 percent off so i really don't want to have to purchase more but if i have to purchase a skein of each to finish i just will because these two together in this brioche is it's otherworldly gorgeous um and brioche stretches a lot so this is gonna block out significantly i think i am knitting the 
large size. Maybe medium. No, I'm knitting the large. Which should give me a 48 inch bust. But we'll see. We will see what happens. I'm just going to knit it. I'm going to block it. This is super wash and it's brioche. I'm going to wet block it. So I want it to grow and kind of, oops, I want it to grow and stretch out and be sort of baggy and all of those things. The way that it, the, the sample, which is what made me purchase the pattern is this beautiful apple green version. And so I do think I want to do like a really fun pop of color, maybe like a neon orange or a neon, maybe a fun neon green. I really love neon coral, maybe something like that. But for now, this is giving me like early spring vibes and I'm really excited. So what I'm going to do to suss out how much yarn I have, I'm going to knit to the, the five more inches. Then I think I'm going to actually block it. I think maybe not I'm gonna knit five more inches I'm gonna pick up I'm gonna knit the sleeves I'm gonna do that then I might block it then I'm gonna see how much I have left because if I have to buy another skein of either of these yarns they're very obviously going to be different dye lots and even within the skeins that I have of the mohair this one I used a little piece of in the back and there's like a super dark stripe of it because it's so much darker than everything else. So then I went back and I like re I spun a, balled up a new skein that was a little bit closer to what I was working with. Um, so there's already color variation. And then I think even in the other skein that I have left, I think this one is a little bit darker. So I would, I want to save those for the sleeves so that it just seems a little bit more intentional maybe. So, I think that if I have to order more yarn, I'd rather it be for the collar, the um, ribbing around the wrist and the ribbing around the hem, than it should like be somewhere in the body or like randomly in one sleeve. I'd rather it look much more intentional if I have to do that. So I wanna knit the body, knit the sleeves, block it, see how everything is fitting, and then make a decision about what I'm gonna do in terms of the ribbing and the collar. I think it is a fold over collar yeah, it looks like a fold over collar. So I'm also probably going to knit that last just because if I have to, you know, if I run out of mohair, run out of the Surrey, which is what I think I'm going to run out of. If I run out of that or something, I can just do something fun on the inside of it so that it's a different color. But these are all things that I want to figure out kind of on the fly. So that's what I, that's one project that I'm working on. This is sort of my, um, actually this is my at work knitting <laughs> because it is brioche in the round, which if, if you're not familiar with brioche in the round, one color brioche in the round, you knit a row and then you purl a row, knit a row and purl a row. When you're working brioche flat, you knit, when you're working one color brioche flat, you knit every single row. So with this particular pattern, you start it flat, then you join it in the round. So when I was knitting flat, I was like, I was knitting so fast. That's me knitting. <laughs> I was knitting so fast. And then I got it in the round and it was like, oh, this is a slog. So I am proud of how much I have gotten knit, given the fact that this is knit around, purl around, knit around, purl around. Oh, so it's a little bit of a slog. I don't hate purling as much as other people, but I just, I don't love it either. Especially with brioche, especially with Surrey, with two strands held together, because I can, I can brioche without looking, but I can't brioche without looking when I'm holding two strands together and I want to make sure that I get both strands because the last thing that I want to do is like drop down and fix brioche mistakes. I can do it, but it's just much more of a, of a mental gymnastics than what I want to do when I'm knitting so I don't like to do it okay so that is I think successful project number one successful project number two so it is the holidays are coming up and 
I, again, wanted to knit something from Stash that would be just festive. And I, I watch a lot of like knitting content online and I go back and I watch like old podcasts of podcasts that I enjoy and things like that. And I was watching an old episode of The Grocery Girls and they were talking about knitting with like sparkle yarn and sequins. And I remember when that started being like all the rage, you know, I'm always late to the function. I'm always late to the, to the party and to the trends. So when they had started first talking about the sparkle yarn, they listed a vendor to buy the yarn. And I went on that vendor's website and the prices were a little bit more than what I wanted to spend on sequins yarn. And so I found the yarn somewhere else for a much more affordable price. I'm not knocking anybody's hustle, which is why I'm not gonna name the vendor. If you want to purchase from them, you should absolutely purchase from a small business. Me, Felicia, I was not willing to spend those prices. So, but I found the yarn somewhere else. And then I purchased a bunch of it in a whole bunch of different colors. And it's just been sitting in my stash ever since. Probably, I think I purchased this yarn in like 2021. I also had purchased just randomly some just like regular like merino nylon superwash yarn and this was back when I was still kind of trying to figure out what I enjoy in a fiber what I enjoy in a yarn and at that time I was buying superwash yarn because I I enjoyed the way that it feel I enjoyed the way that it felt <laughs> and so I, I purchased a lot of it. Turns out I don't I don't really enjoy knitting with superwash yarn. I, I just I don't. I I like the tactile nature of more rustic yarns. Anyway, had that yarn, and I had a mohair sitting in my stash. So I got this vision. I feel like I'm talking. To, if anybody watches the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, I feel like I'm talking like Sutton. We're from different parts of the South, so we have different accents, but. That's just how I feel like I'm talking. Like I feel like I'm pulling out my, my, my drawl a whole lot. So I'd seen this episode of The Grocery Girls with the sparkle, sparkle yarn. And so I went into my, uh, my Ravelry and I have a, a list, whatever it's called, where you like save things, a bundle that's called just inspo. Anytime I see a pattern or see, usually it's projects that other people have done, not necessarily patterns, but it's normally a project that someone else has done and I'm inspired in it, inspired by it in some way. The color combination, uh, the, the styling, whatever it is. And there was this woman that had done the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit and she had done it with sequins and it was the same brand of sequin, sequins as the ones that I have in my stash. And I had saved this maybe two years ago. It turns out I had also purchased the pattern. So I decided to swatch and see how I felt about the mohair, the sequins, the black yarn, paired together. So I'm going to show you the yarns and then I'm going to show you the swatch. So the yarns that I pulled out of my stash are this Cascade Heritage. It's a 7525 superwash merino and nylon. It's just a stark black commercial sock yarn. The sequins that I had in my stash is this King Cole. Let me take this label off. This is the King Cole Cosmos. sequins it's black thread with silver sequins and this is in the colorway stargazer and then the mohair that I have is from treehouse knits and this is the color underworld again there goes my it's the color underworld which is like a a warm blue. It's not quite that this is more accurate. But it's just a blue. But it's more warm, it's not quite navy. So these are the three yarns that I paired together. And this is my swatch.
so I saw this and I loved it. It wasn't quite sparkly enough for me, so I made a little bit of a, of a tweak when I cast on. So I, I have knit a couple of petite knit patterns. So for my last petite knit sweater that I knit, which was the Eros sweater, I, I had gone down a needle size. So I knew that I needed to go down a needle size at least. So I went down a needle size and I just didn't love the density of this fabric. It has great drape, but I just, I didn't, I didn't love it. It's hard to pick up on, I think on the camera, but to the eye, it's still pretty uh, transparent, not transparent, holy. Uh, my stitches are still fairly consistent with the sequins and with the mohair, but I just, I didn't love it. So I decided to go down an, an additional needle size. So I believe the pattern calls for you to knit it on, hold on. The pattern calls for you to knit it on a 4.5 millimeter needle and I am knitting on a 3.75 millimeter needle because I just couldn't. I didn't enjoy the way that it looked on the four. So I'm knitting on a 3.75 and I'm knitting the largest size. Now I know that Petite Knit is not the most size inclusive uh, pattern maker, designer. This is not the most inclusive pattern. It only goes up to a 59 inch finished circumference with an intended ease, I believe of like eight to 10 inches. So it's only intended to fit up to like a 51 inch bust. I also know that this is one of her older patterns. I'm not even about to sit up here and cape for, for Petite Knit like that. I had the pattern, I'd already purchased it. She already had my money at that point. And I wanted to knit the sweater. So the Oslo sweater is a like a drop shoulder pattern. So I guess I'm both in my fuzzy yarn era and my drop shoulder era. Oh my Lord, okay. This is gonna be, y'all. <laughs> Oh goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh my lord. Oh goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. Woo. That was a haze. Okay, so I cast it on. <laughs> Ooh, this is a mess. And this particular pattern is probably not the best to be doing all that I'm doing because you cast on for the back, you knit the back flat, you do some shaping for the armhole, and then you knit flat, and then you pick up the shoulder seam pick up at the shoulder and then knit the front, left front, right front, and then you join in the middle. So there's like ends everywhere and I got a lot of balls of yarn going on here. Okay, but I worked extra, extra hard yesterday while I was watching the first episode of The Crown, which, whew, child. I can tell that this season is gonna send me, so I am watching it slowly. Anyway, I was watching the first episode of The Crown and I needed emotional support knitting, so I was working on this. And I'm trying to untangle because I'm knitting with four strands of yarn. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't, ah! <laughs> it looks so good on camera. Y'all, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> it looks so good on camera. Okay, I'm gonna show the back because I think you can see it a little better. But here is the back. And then this is the front. I literally just joined the two front panels together. So you can't, this, here we go. This is what it looks like. I literally just joined the two front panels and so now I'm knitting down the front and then I will join in the round. I am getting on a plane in a few days. My goal is to have this joined in the round before I get on my flight. Y'all. <laughs> it looks so good. The camera is definitely making it look more sparkly than how it looks in real life. But this looks so good. 
I am gagged on my own on my own project. I'm gagged. Okay, so what I did uh, different from my swatch to the final to the knitted version of the garment is that I am holding two strands of the sequins, one strand of the mohair, one strand of the sock yarn. So I'm holding four strands together. I'm still knitting it on the 3.75. It still has drape. It's going to block out beautifully, but it's a little bit more structured. And I'm obsessed with this. I don't, I don't know if it's the yarn. I don't know if it's the pattern. This is my second petite knit sweater pattern. And in both of the patterns, she has you start knitting flat, um, and to do shaping and then cast on and, and do all those things. I prefer short row shaping, I think, but I wonder if that's just because I I would I, I want to be knitting in the round as quickly as possible because I just move so much faster when I'm knitting in the round. But I think that the structural integrity of like knitting flat, picking up stitches, I enjoy that and you still get like the, the seamless look. So I am loving this. This is probably the first project in a long time that I I have a mental deadline so I am going to a, a holiday party the theme is holiday so wear your holiday things and I want to be able to wear this with I have a vision for the outfit but we're gonna see but I want to be able to wear this that party is in two weeks from when I'm filming this so we shall see once I get this in the round I think it's gonna go a lot faster and then the sleeves I won't have as much to do simply because it is already it's drop shoulder so the it stops about here so I just have you know this much of sleeve to do so we're gonna see uh, also because I haven't purchased anything to wear to that event so I am putting all my eggs in the basket of myself that I can finish this but we shall see. So this has never before been seen by eyes that are not mine. <laughs> and I am gagged by how good this looks. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I'm, I am speechless <laughs> at my own, I'm speechless. My own knits very rarely impress me or make me speechless. I'm speechless, stunned over this. So, that's the goal. I will let y'all know. This will probably debut on Instagram soon. Not too, too soon. Instagram is still getting caught up on my brioche um, crew. But this will probably debut in like December for Christmas content. Or I celebrate Christmas, but Christmas holiday sparkly season content. And yeah, y'all, that's that's it. That's all I've been working on. And that's all I'm going to be working on. My goal is to finish this, like I said, before the holiday party. My followed subsequently by finishing this by the end of the year. That's my goal, to finish that by the end of the year. And then I'm going to just switch gears and start focusing on stuff that I want to knit for next year. I have some yarn that I've purchased for two upcoming projects, but this video is already getting kind of insanely long. And I am, I, I, I'm, I'm tired of, I'm tired. <laughs> and so I will share, I think I might do a, I don't know. I don't really like, I like watching people's goals videos. I don't know that I want to make one because I don't want to hold myself to those things. But I do have yarn for two projects. The projects are decided on set in stone. Um, and so I think I may talk about that on the next episode. Just like those yarns and those projects. Well, maybe not both yarns. I will definitely talk about the yarn for the next project because I think I might swatch it when I go home for Thanksgiving. We'll see. I already have a lot of yarn things that I need to carry home with me and I don't want to be distracted because this is on a the the Oslo is on a timeline but we'll see I anyway we'll see that is everything that I have oh I have two y'all I'm sorry I didn't take any notes so I'm all over the place I have two really fun things that I mm. and now I'm yelling into the camera I just have two really fun things that I wanted to share I love 
knitting notions. I love enamel pins and all of that stuff and I think it's so fun. And I have two new enamel pins that I wanna show um, that are gonna go on my knitting bag. And I'm, I just wanna highlight the makers. One maker is one that is not new to this show because I am a huge, huge fan of my good girlfriend, Shayla, of Black Pearl Magic. And she posted this pin on her Instagram and I immediately went and purchased it because it is literally me in, a, in, an, enamel, in an enamel pin, minus the fact that it's pink, but me and Shayla have already talked about that. I still love her. It says, hello, I am introverted, but willing to discuss plants, yarn, and true crime. And I can't get it to. Oh no. Okay. Oh, there goes my focus being. But anyway, it looks like a, a name tag. Um, and it's pink and gold and white. And I'm sorry, y'all can't really see it, which means you probably can't see this other thing that I held y'all here even longer to look at and you can't see it. So, um, if you grew up in a household such as mine, you had a tin of Danish butter cookies that um, sometimes had cookies in them, most of the times did not. And so this is from... I will have this designer linked below. Um, she is, her name is Justine. She's a Filipina illustrator based in New York. She designs pins, patches, and stationary goods inspired by comfort and nostalgia. Um, and this is a pin, a lapel pin, an enamel lapel pin, with a butter cookies tin that has all sorts of like fiber things and it has yarn, it has thread, it has needles, it has buttons. And you probably can't see it very well. Um, sorry, I'm not doing a great job of showing this off because of my focus issues. Anyway, it's a super nice um, pen. And I saw it on the Brooklyn General website, and but it was sold out. So I had gone to Brooklyn General, actually me and my mom went there in the spring. And I looked for it, they didn't have it. And so I found the designer's shop online and it was sold out. And then one day I was like, I still really want that enamel pin. And I went and looked out there and she had them in stock. So I will link to the particular pin, but also both of these um, shops, Justine's illustrations are so adorable. Um, so I will probably be picking up more of her things eventually at some point. But those are two things that I just wanted to share that were just kind of fun and lighthearted and fiber um, adjacent. Otherwise, I haven't really been purchasing a whole lot of stuff because I have a ton of yarn. I don't really need anything. I did purchase birthday yarn, which I have not shown you yet, but I have an amazing and spectacular pattern in mind for the yarn and I'm so excited to get that cast on. And so I will be showing you that eventually, but not now. And otherwise, I'm just out here, you know, surviving trying to do the best I can trying to make it to 2024 in one piece child because it's whew, it's the world is worldy you know what I'm saying okay anyway that's all I have to share today thank you so 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 much for spending this time with me I hope that you are having an amazing time I hope that this was an opportunity for you to sit back and relax and listen to me ramble on and say I'm and say um the most ridiculous things I'm sure and that you feel good after leaving this. And yeah, I will talk to you again soon. Who knows when it'll be? I don't even know when it's gonna be, child. But I'm hoping that I see you again before the end of the year. But if not, happy holidays, happy new year, uh, all the things. I'm gonna try to come back before the end of the year, but y'all know, I'm flaky at best. Uh, in real life and on the internet. So anyway, be blessed, stay well, stay happy, stay whole. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the youtube -y things. Also, tell me what you're working on. Tell me uh, about some recent knitting fails. <laughs> uh, or anything else that you want to share in the comments. I love reading your comments. I love interacting with your comments. I love talking and, and vibing with all of you all. Both on YouTube and in real life and on Instagram and all the things. Everything will be linked below. You know the whole routine. Alright, bye y'all. <laughs>